What is going on, fam? We back on here with the Juke Man. Today is Victory Monday, and here comes the apologies. Here comes the appreciation, the flowers, man. This is exactly what I was looking for, especially for Daniel Jones. Obviously, Daniel Jones is a polarizing figure in the New York Giants football team. But overall, with this game and the performance that he had yesterday, of course, he's going to be all over media now and people want to give him his credit and his flowers. But I'm going to talk about why everything before that was unjustified to begin with, um, especially looking at the talent. But before we dive in, man, subscribe down below. Road to 1K is still active, man. We're trying to hit 400 next. Comment down below what you guys think of this topic, man. And comment down below how you feeling as the Giants got that W, man. Let's get straight to it. So the Giants did the unthinkable. Going into this season, man, we were a rebuilding team, making cuts on some valuable players like James Bradbury um, because we couldn't fit him under our cat space. It just wasn't looking bright towards the future, so we had to get rid of some guys. And this team was not expected to win. It was not expected to win, probably be the fourth seed in the whole NFC East. And we end up getting a playoff berth, and now we have a playoff W under our belt. The first win since the last time we won the Super Bowl in 2011, man. So it's definitely a big time coming and a great time to see because now the Giants future looks like it's extremely bright, especially compared to other teams, especially compared to what we've seen in the last six to seven years, man. It's been dark, dark days outside of that 2016 team, man. It's just been up and down and just a bad construction of a team overall. And now you're seeing with the lack of talent, I would see credit Brian Dable. I think he's a coach of the year, bringing this team to the playoffs and being able to lead these young men in their first year under this coach into the playoffs and getting that playoff W in the opposing stadium, the difficulty was up there and the Giants were able to do that. I'm going to be talking about more about it this week, but this video has to be about Daniel freaking Jones. I made a video last night talking about him, but going into the game, obviously the, the weight was on his shoulders. The whole world was on his shoulders. All of New York was on his shoulders and uh, he definitely carried them and he had his probably his best performance of his career. You know, we've seen some good games out of him. We look at what happened in the Colts game. That was a big game, four touchdowns all around. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was rooting for my guy. Did I think he was the answer going into this year? I didn't. I'm going to be real. But I also said from the jump, I feel like he hasn't been able to have the same tools that other quarterbacks are having, a.k.a. a number one receiver, a.k.a. a decent offensive line. You know, you seen Daniel Jones yesterday. He only got sacked two or three times. But a lot of the times he was running out of those sacks and making plays on his own. You know, once again, the offensive line had a good game. I'm not going to take that away from them. A better game compared to what they're usually used to. But this offensive line still ranked bottom five in giving up sacks. Like Daniel Jones has been dealing with this all season and he took us to the playoffs. Saquon Barkley is my favorite player on the team and he still is my favorite player on the team even with Daniel Jones being that dude. Saquon Barkley on the field and off the field has been everything we could have hoped for when we drafted him. And listen, he had a great performance yesterday. But a lot of the times what I was hearing throughout the season, man, was Daniel Jones has the best running back or top three, top five best running back in the league, man. So obviously, you know, it's not Daniel Jones winning these games. It's Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley ran the ball nine times yesterday, nine times for about 50 yards, caught the ball five times for about 50 yards, a total of 14 touches. Don't get me wrong. Saquon Barkley did an amazing job yesterday, not taking anything away from him, not getting on him about it at all. My point is, is that you saw Daniel Jones take command of this offense and lead us to victory, you know, in a game that was pretty much a shootout until the last couple drives of the game. It was a shootout all through the game, and I didn't think this offense was going to be able to uphold with the Vikings, and you saw that happen. You know, our defense was not making it tough on them in the beginning of the game. Throughout three quarters of the game, it was not tough on them. Every time the Giants had the ball, they were driving down the field and making plays. You saw Daniel Jones escape to his left, make a throw across his body, a dot to Isaiah Hodgins on the sideline. One of the other things that never got taken into consideration with Daniel Jones this year, man, was his escapability and making plays on his own. Everyone wanted to talk about how Daniel Jones, you know, is throwing dink and dunks and not making all these throws. Once again, I'm, I've been harping on it all year. I've been talking about it all year. This wide receiver court is not that great. You saw Isaiah Hodgins with 100 yards yesterday. Credit to him, my guy. He's going to be on this team next year. There's no way we're going to let him walk. And I think we can give him like a minimum guaranteed deal and he'll be here. So he is a guy that will be here next year. But Daniel Jones is definitely making him look a lot better than he is. I'm telling you that right now. If he was this dude in Buffalo, do you really think he would have left Buffalo? I understand they have a stacked wide receiver room, but you can you could think if we had all our receivers healthy, this guy's probably not even playing. Sterling Shepard playing, if Kenny Galladay was the guy that we expected him to be, if Wandale Robinson was playing, this guy's probably not even seeing the field. 
Daniel Jones is elevating the talent around him, and I'm just glad that everyone was there to see it. Everyone was there to witness it. But this narrative that Daniel Jones hasn't been doing this is not is not true. It's not true at all. It's just now everyone's seen it. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big guy where I don't care about the sets. I don't care about 300 passing yards. I care about Ws. And guess what? All throughout the season, man, you saw Daniel Jones making plays on his own, finishing the game with 180 passing yards, 215 passing yards. It's not flashy, but we get it done and we win the game. And I'll take Ws over than anything else. I went to that Jacksonville game. And that's how Daniel Jones command this offense. And guess what? He took what they were giving them. He passed for like about 180 passing yards. I remember, I don't even think he threw a single pass in the fourth quarter. It was straight running the ball with him and Saquon. But he got it done in an enemy territory to win the game. And that's what we need out of our quarterback. You know, all these people on the mainstream media and everyone over on YouTube and all these other things, man. They want to see 400 passing yards, three touchdowns. They were making fun of him because he had 15 passing touchdowns throughout the year. Well, tell me how those touchdowns fared out in this game, man. I don't want to hear anything about Justin Herbert. I don't want to hear anything about these other quarterbacks that are known to be this great. Dak Prescott, guess what? You're on the chopping block, too. They play tonight. If he does not win today, I don't want to hear nothing about Dak Prescott being better than Daniel Jones at all. Because I'm seeing Daniel Jones rise and shine. Brian Dable is a big reason on that. But guess what? Daniel Jones probably could have been this if we had Brian Dayball from the beginning. It's not the quarterback's fault. Do you think Daniel Jones got faster with Brian Dayball? Do you think Daniel Jones all of a sudden didn't have any of those tools and now he does? No. We just have a coach that can now accentuate all the things that he's been able to do. Because guess what? Playing in that old Jason Garrett offense was not what he was supposed to do. That was not what Daniel Jones was supposed to succeed in. All of a sudden, now I'm starting to see you know Dave Gettleman drafted. Andrew Thomas, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Xavier McKinney. I'm seeing all this stuff and credit. Yes, he drafted them. But Gettleman cannot build around these players. Gettleman did not build around Daniel Jones properly, and that's why you're seeing him flourish now, even with less talent. He should have been had an offensive line if he was able to draft correctly. He should have been had weapons if he was able to draft correctly. We traded up and drafted DeAndre Baker when you had guys like DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown being taken after him. Don't credit this man for anything. Dave Gettleman does not deserve the credit. Yeah, he took the right player and they're looking great now. But when you don't have a GM that can build around them, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter one bit. Daniel Jones has been dealt with bad hands since he was drafted. Pat Shermer as a coordinator, Joe Judge and Jason Garrett for two years. And now he actually has a good system around him and is able to help him. It is not a system thing. Daniel Jones has always had it there. It's just about being able to put the pieces around him and let him do his thing. The real Giants fans that's been through it through the dark days, man, they knew Daniel Jones was not the problem. As much as I was saying Daniel Jones, I don't know if he was the guy going into the season. I really didn't. But I knew Daniel Jones is not the problem. We had so many different holes in this team. But how can you succeed like this? How can you really go out there and win games when you have a a man breathing on your neck every single play or you have nobody catching the ball? Everyone has butterfingers. Darius Slayton, if we lost the game after that Darius Slayton drop, I was going to lose my mind. But this has been the story with Darius Slayton throughout this whole season. And guess what? Daniel Jones has been throwing to Darius Slayton. He's been the leading receiver ever since he got drafted. This was his number one target. The same guy that's wide open and drops a pass. I just want everybody to know. Richie James, Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton. All of them are barely cracking the top two on any other roster. That's all I got to say. Daniel Jones dealing with the weapon deficiencies. I'm still confident going into Philly that we can really pull that one out. But... That's going to be another video for another day. Subscribe down below. Road to 1K is still active, man. Make sure you go spam up. Comment down below what you guys think about the Giants getting this W, man. And be on the lookout because, hey, you're going to see Shannon going out and apologizing to Daniel Jones. Darren Orlovsky apologizing to Daniel Jones. Nick Wright, you know, he's been a he's been a hater on Daniel Jones from the jump. But you cannot question his toughness. You cannot question his grit. And everything he's done off the field, you know, that's a bonus. You know, handling all that media situation, there's not too many people that can really handle New York. You see Zach Wilson. Baker Baker Mayfield will never, ever be able to live out here. Sam Darnold couldn't handle it to the pressure. And that's playing for the Jets, let alone the Giants. So, man, give him his flowers. I'm glad he's getting it now. For everyone that doubted this man, for everyone that wasn't on his side, stay on that side, bro. Like Saquon said, Stay on that side. Everybody that flipped the script so crazy, like, just stay on that side. With that being said, I got more videos on my left if you haven't seen those. We got more content coming through, man. And on to the next one, man. Go Big Blue. What's going on, family? Back on here with the Juke, man. We're calling all the Daniel Jones haters. Pull up to this video. Watch this video real quick. The New York Yankees 
lose the series. He gets swept. Back in the third quarter. The third quarter was really when we started making our moves. And DeMar, banger! Make sure you subscribe to the juice.